so this is basically a pterygium so important point regarding the pterygium is that it has a wing shaped fold of conjunctiva that encroaches the cornea okay so very important part is that it encroaches the cornea it has three parts that is the head that encroaches the cornea the one is represented by the head and two is the neck that is at limbus and three is the main part that is the body okay so the body of the pterygium sometimes you get a blue line or a basically a stalker's line at the head of pterygium which is basically a iron deposition line okay so stalker's line they can ask a question what is stalker lines so the stalker line is iron deposition line then you have to remember that it is a degenerative elastotic degeneration of the stromal tissue of the conjunctiva the important part is that important point is that it is a vascularized tissue okay so can you see that here there are blood vessels that are encroaching in it so the important thing is that it can cause diminution of vision the main factor through which it can cause diminution of vision is astigmatism okay so because of this conjunctiva that is attached to cornea it causes steepening of the corneal curvature so it causes astigmatism astigmatism that can cause a diminution of vision so that is basically an indication for removal of pterygium we can do many type of surgeries for the removal of pterygium the important ones are the bear sclera technique where we just remove the pterygium uh, and with its head neck and body and the scleral part which uh, is now uh, exposed to the environment we don't cover it with something so this is called bear sclera technique it has a uh, 30 to 80 percent recurrence because now the conjunctiva can again grow over it and and then can encroach the cornea. So it is called bare sclera technique. Then in this bare sclera, what we can do is we can put a conjunctival autograft from the other place, let's say from the fornix of the patient, or we can take an allograft from a donor cornea. Then sometimes what we can use is we can use mitomycin C as you know the mitomycin C is antifibrotic so it would basically prevent any growth of conjunctiva again and then we can use amniotic membrane graft or we can do a partial lamellar transplant in cases where there is a opacity because of the deep penetration of the pterygium inside the conjunctival tissue. In so some important points regarding pseudoterygium and difference of pterygium with pseudoterygium you have to remember that also i would just enumerate you can write it in your notes that in pseudoterygium there is an inflammatory adhesion okay so let's say there is a thermal injury or a, a chemical injury uh, there can be a pseudoterygium but the pterygium is a non-inflammatory growth okay then the other important thing is that it can occur anywhere in the conjunctiva it can occur uh, in the superior and inferior quadrants in the superior temporal in the inferior temporal inferior nasal anywhere but normally pterygium is more common uh, first of all in the nasal quadrant and that too in 3 to 9 o'clock position even if you get it in a temporal position it is near the 3 to 9 o'clock then probe cannot be passed through a pseudotorygium but this probe test is positive with the pterygium so there is some discrepancy regarding few books uh, the Quran sir book says that it is probe test is positive in pterygium and uh, Basak sir book says the probe test is negative in uh, pterygium. So I would go with the Basak sir opinion that probe cannot be passed through pseudo pterygium because then it's an inflammatory addition. So uh, and the basically it's an idiopathic or sometimes it is there in the 
cases where there is a hot climatic change uh, or a tropical climate that is seen in pterygium but uh, pseudo pterygium the important cause is the thermal and the chemical injuries so these are some important points that you should remember regarding the pterygium and pseudo pterygium